I will leave the floor to Chapda Ivanov and also to, at a later stage, to Miguel Escribano to talk to you about constraints in CGMES. The floor is yours, Chapda. Okay, thanks, Eduardo. So, good afternoon, everybody. So, now we are zooming here in the constraints in CGMS3, so we can go to the next slide. Yeah, so constraints are important in general to, to be able to make the profiles better and more fit to the purpose. If you watched already the links that the Duarte said in the beginning, in those uh, early slides, you most probably learned, uh, learned about the, the profiling process, where we start from the canonical model and then we go to the profiles and the documentation. So here where we talk about constraints, we will mostly talk about the constraints expressed in the profile. So we have three types of constraints. One is things that are derived directly from the UML, like data types, cardinalities of associations and attributes. But there are some other constraints that cannot be fully expressed in the UML and they need to be uh, written in English text in the in the canonical sim. So in the description of different classes, attributes, associations, you you will see some text that is potentially something that you can uh, validate and it guides you in the implementation of the of the profile. Then we have additional constraints that are even on top of that specific for a given profile, and these are described now for CGMS three. They are described in the part two of the standard in the clause uh, sixteen. But also we have some other constraints in the part one which are more uh, general. So what we will be doing in the next uh, few slides, I will show you different kinds and so that you can get oriented where to, to find what type of constraints. So as um, Tanya and uh, Eduardo mentioned, so we have the constraints described in, in Shaco. So that was a, a standard that was recommended in a number of uh, interoperability tests we did prior uh, 2016, but at that point in time, Shaco as a W3C recommendation was not uh, uh, published. So that's why now in the CGMS3, it was really possible to, uh, to base on that. So if we go to the next slide, and yeah, so here you see one UML diagram, which is part of the of the profile, and you see that, for example, the identified uh, object name attribute is a required attribute, and that's one way to express the the constraint when you do the profiling uh, process. So in the canonical um, model name attribute uh, is optional and here in the profile this is constrained the same goes for association so you see the cardinalities on the two end of the association between for example the subgeographical region and geographical region this can be uh, different at profile level and we also here see the the name of the classes, the type of the classes. So this is another thing that uh, is expressed in the in the constraints. So for example, if if you validate an instance of a subgeographical region and you point to identifier of geographical region, you can also validate if that class is actually a geographical region and the other way around with the inverse uh, association. So those are things that 
can be modeled in the in the UML and they are expressed in the, in the schema and also in the shackle. So if we go next. Yeah, so here it's another uh, situation where we have uh, something written in the description of a power transformer class here so that the inherited association conducting equipment base voltage should not be used and the association from transformer N to base voltage should be used instead. And what was done in CGMS3 that those kind of statements were extracted from all the classes, attributes, associations, and put in a table, as you will see below. Uh, these different constraints were given identifier, a number. And I can see here C, and then 301, EQ, then power transformer association not used. And the name of name of the constraint, the class that belongs to, and the constraint description are following the information we know from, from the UML. So normally the text of the constraint that was then generated in, in Shaco is exactly the same as what was extracted from the description. So that exercise was done first time in CGMS3, so none of the other existing standards went to that level of detail of extracting information from, from the descriptions. And if you go to the next slide. Yeah, so this is a similar type, um, but as you see here, I, I put that on the slide because in this slide we have too many things put in one description and all these conditions resulted in different individual uh, constraints. And here the number one is one and another, whenever this is um, something to, to validate was also separated. If we go to the next one. So this is a typical constraint that is listed in the part one of the uh, of the CGMS tree. So the 600-1, where we have these tables with different more general constraints that apply either to the header or to different uh, body of the profiles or some other uh, relationship. And in, in CGMS3, and that was the same concept in, in the CGMS 2.4, uh, those have um, unique IDs, like the one that is circled here, age again 4. And that name was then added to the ID in the table uh, below. And the text again is the same, so the same pattern is, is followed. And that as a result, we have uh, also a shako code to validate uh, this thing. If we go to the next slide. Yeah, so this is a similar example, but for the state variables profile. So just uh, just to to show that there are uh, multiple uh, sections, but for those of you who browse the part one of the standard, you will see that there are maybe 10, 15 pages of these tables where you have different uh, constraints. Okay, so, so this gives you an overview of how, how these two, three sentences there on the previous slide were split in a different constraints because it was written in a general way that it applies for, for the classes in the, in the SV profiles. But in order to validate that and to really um, be able to to code it 
uh, these constraints were split per, per different uh, class. And as you see here in the constraint description, you will find the same text basically, but uh, the message and the idea of the constraint are different because they apply to different uh, classes in the SV profile. So in this way, eventually when a validation engine reports the result, you will understand yeah, what, what went wrong and not just telling you that SV underscore four doesn't conform, but it guides you a little bit more what exactly uh, was the class and of course ID of the class. I think we can go to the next. Yeah, so looking at the part two of the standard, as I mentioned in the beginning, there's the chapter 16 of that standard, which is full of, um, of constraints. And they're all attacked to it with these IDs. As you see, they follow the same uh, pattern. Maybe here I will open up a bracket to tell you what, um, how you can interpret that uh, kind of uh, identification here. So the C stands for constraint. There are another letter there that you can uh, find is the R, like uh, a rule. Then you have the number of the standard where this is uh, taken from. Or for example, here is the 452. So this is one of the 400 series of standards which includes the equipment profile. And it happened that this constraint is the same like the CGMS3. So it's uh, borrowed from, from there. Then we have the EQ is the profile. And then we have the, the class. Sometimes it's a class and attribute or or class and so the, the description of the association and at the end is basically the name of the of the constraint. So then we have the, the text and the same exactly the same pattern as the other uh, kinds of constraints we we have that in the table and also coded in the in the shackle. 